Hello, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My name is Flourish Peters. I'm the lead pastor of the Logic Church, the love of God and Christ Church. What you're about to hear will change your life forever because it is the word of His grace. I commend you to God and the word of His grace that is able to build you and give you an inheritance among the saints. Acts 20 verse 32. This will bless you. Listen, invite your friends to join in. I'll see you in a bit. Find your seat, tighten your seat, but this jet is about to take off. Amen. But before I invite the next speaker, which is our keynote speaker for this night, I want to welcome traveling with our guest speaker today, Pastor Philemon Mawaisi. Traveling with Dr. Abel. Please, can we appreciate Pastor Philemon? Thank you very much. Traveling with Bishop Wale is Pastor Ohi Simose, Pastor Peter Odia. Are you here? Okay, just Let's just appreciate them. Amen. Thank you so much. Tra who came... Um, the pastor came with um, Pastor Ladi today, Pastor Anselm Okbar, Associate Pastor at the Crosspoint Church. Can we recognize you? Please, can you appreciate this guest this evening? Amen. Get ready for the next speaker. He is the man we all call Prof for many reasons. <laughs> uh, are you ready for this? He's audacious, he's dogged, he's consistent. His, his labor in the kingdom and in the gospel cannot be overemphasized. He is a ubiquitous phenomenon as far as this gospel of God's grace is concerned. He is an example for all of us to emulate. Somebody who was a fire preacher doing deliverance with a bottle of olive oil in the jacket so that he doesn't have to supply. He has them. All kinds of stuff. Finally heard the word of God's grace and was humble enough to learn. And now he is indeed a prof. And I dare in the words of my father, any theologian to argue with this man in Africa. I dare you to argue with him. You can talk about him behind him, but you sit with him face to face. <laughs> you can talk about him behind him, but just sit with him face to face and then start the argument. Church, I want you to stand on your feet this evening. And if your shout is not encouraging me enough, I will tell him to sit down. I want you to clap your hands, church. Give God praise as we celebrate the gift in Dr. Abel Damina. Clap your hands, church. Give God praise. Prof, good to have you. Somebody shout glory. glory. Lift your right hands to heaven. Father, we rejoice that we are walking in the light. Thank you for revelation knowledge granted your people tonight. Veils full of clarity comes by your word. Nobody lives here the same way they came. We rejoice. We rejoice. We rejoice because of increasing revelation knowledge. In Jesus' precious name and every believer says that amen like thunder. Well, you can be seated with your sweet, smart self tonight. So good to be back to Logic. Glad to be here, man. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Flourish and the First Lady of the House. We honor both of you. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for your consistency. We salute both of you. The best is yet to come. Can I have a powerful amen? Yeah, that was some good preaching tonight, Dr. Phil. That was some good preaching, man. We love you, honor you. You know, glad to, to be with you tonight and your wife. Really honor both of you. It's been wonderful since morning being with Bishop Wally here. Refreshing, man. Refreshing. You know, I can go through the list, but I'm standing on existing protocol. Let me just shoot tonight. Can I have a powerful amen? amen. Second Timothy, chapter 3, verse number 15, Brother Paul writes a letter to Timothy. Brother Paul writes a letter to Timothy and he says to Timothy, and that from a child thou was known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. 
So salvation is faith in Christ Jesus. Take note of the word in Christ. In Christ is a signature of the Pauline theology. In Christ, in Christ, in him, through him, by him, in whom we have. All of that is a signature of the man in Christ Jesus. Then he says to Timothy, he says, all scripture is given by inspiration. The word inspiration is the word breath. That the scriptures came out of the breath of God and they are profitable. The word ophilimos, it means advantageous or useful. That the scriptures are advantageous or useful within this borderline. So he draws the borderline. Outside of this borderline, the scriptures will not be useful and they will not be profitable or advantageous to you. So they are profitable for doctrine. The word doctrine is a Greek word didascalia. It means teaching or explanation. So the scriptures will only profit you when they are taught and when they are explained. Now when scriptures are taught and explained, they will bring you to the second profit, which is reproof. Now, in the Bible is not English. The Bible has its own language. So that word reproof will not be the English reproof. That word reproof will be the word used in Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence. The word evidence is the word reproof. So when the scriptures are taught and explained, they will bring you to a place of evidence, which means the gospel is a gospel of persuasion. It's a gospel of conviction. It will bring you to a place where you're fully persuaded. Now, when you're fully persuaded, it will deliver the thought profit, which is correction, which is unlearning to relearn or the adjustment of your mind. But your mind will not be adjusted until you're persuaded. And you will not be persuaded until the scriptures are explained and taught. So that's the progression. Now when you are persuaded and you make the adjustments, you unlearn so you can relearn. Then it will produce the fourth profit of Bible teaching, which is instruction in righteousness. The word pedia, where you have pedia tricks in English, that means to raise up a child by the way of the mouth, which is spiritual growth, which means there can be no genuine spiritual growth until the scriptures are taught and explained in the light of Christ. In John 5, 39, Jesus said to the Jews, you search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. But the scriptures don't give eternal life. Rather, they are they which testify of me. In verse 40, he said, you will not come to me that you may have life. So the scriptures testify of Jesus and then when you meet Jesus, Jesus, you experience life. In the book of Galatians, chapter 3, Brother Paul called a church foolish Galatians. He called them fools. He says, are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit? Are you not perfected in the flesh? Jesus plus nothing. Foolish Galatians. Who has bewitched you? So they say bewitchment from the pulpit. So the real witches in Galatia were on the pulpit. Who hath bewitched you? Who had preached to you a gospel that took you from what Christ has done to what you want to do for yourself? Who has bewitched you? You be gone in the spirit. You were saved by the spirit. You are supposed to walk in the spirit. But you are saved by the spirit. Now you are trying to walk in performance. He called it a bewitchment. Oh foolish Galatians. Now turn with me to Galatians chapter 1 verse 6. Let's look at the pretext of Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 1 verse number 6. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him. From him. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. The gospel is Christ. He says, for it is the power of God unto salvation. From him. The gospel of Christ. In Romans chapter 7, brother Paul says, how can they believe in him of whom they have not heard. So if there is gospel, it must be a him or a whom or a person. If it's not about a person, it's not the gospel. Because sometimes we can emphasize the gospel so much that when you are hearing what is not the gospel, you may not know. 
Because deception is not deception until it has an element of truth. So sometimes you will hear what sounds like the gospel. You will think it's a gospel, but there's a mixture in it. So what I want to do tonight is to be able to raise up your perception to be able to identify what the gospel is not from what the gospel is, even though they sound a lie. So he says, I marvel that you're so removed, Galatians chapter 1 verse 6, I marvel that you're so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Another gospel is a gospel. But another gospel. That means it sounds like the gospel, but it is not the gospel. Some of the verbiage sounds alike, but it is not the same. So you must know the gospel well enough to be able to know what the gospel is not. I don't know if I'm communicating tonight. Now, look at the next verse. He now says in verse 7 of Galatians chapter 1, he says, Galatians chapter 1 verse number 7, brother on the computer, bless your fingers. Which is not another. Remove from him that called you the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. So another gospel is a perversion of the gospel. That means they will have some similarities. You've got to be very, very grounded to know. What the gospel is from what the gospel is not. Now look at the next verse, verse 8. I love brother Paul. But though we, including brother Paul himself, though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached, take note of the tenses, which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Though we or an angel. So a man that preached the gospel could drift and preach something else. And if you're following blindly, you could drift along. Yeah, you must, you must, you must watch carefully. Now, please pay attention. He warns sternly about the involvement of angels in the preaching of the gospel. Angels don't preach the gospel. Angels have no mandate to preach the gospel. Even Jesus doesn't preach the gospel. Jesus doesn't preach the gospel. He met a man on the way to Damascus by the name of Saul of Tarsus. And Saul fell down and said, who are you Lord? Now he wasn't saying, who are you Lord Jesus? When he said Lord, he wasn't referring to Jesus. What he meant is, as powerful as I am, anybody that would put me on the floor must be a Lord. Who are you, Lord? Because he didn't know who put him on the floor. And he said, I love Jesus. I am Jesus. I am Jesus, whom you persecute. What will you have me do for you, Lord? Arise. Go and meet Ananias. Jesus will have told him, you know I died for you. I shed my blood for you. If you believe me now, you'll be saved. No, no, no. Jesus doesn't preach the gospel. He sent him to a man to preach to him. Because we have the responsibility of preaching the gospel. What an honor from the Lord Jesus himself. Angels don't preach. When you hear people say they had a vision and an angel walked into their room, you have to be careful because angels don't preach the gospel. Number two, angels are not objects for us to worship. Angels were created for us and they serve the purpose of God for us and for humanity. Bless the Lord, you his angels that excel in strength, that do his will, hearkening to the voice of his word. So brother Paul warned about angels preaching the gospel. Now take note of another word, you have been removed. I marvel that you are so soon removed. It's the Greek word metatitimai. Metatitimai. M-E-T-A-T-I-T-H-E-M-I. It implies to change sides. 
to change sides, to take away from a fixed position. You've been fixed in a position, but somebody said some things that took you out of your fixed position. You are so sure that you are saved. You are so sure that you are righteous. But somebody said something that knocked you out of your place. Removed you out of your position. That is the word metatithemai. Now notice the sentence. Notice the sentence. He says in that, in that Galatians chapter, chapter 1 verse 7. He said in verse 7. Which is not an order. But there be some that trouble you. And will pervert the gospel of Christ. They are pure trouble. They are not preaching the gospel. They are preaching trouble in something that is labeled the gospel. Now, take note of another word he said. In Galatians chapter 5 verse 1. You stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has set you free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now, please pay attention. The tenses of the gospel of Christ, the tenses of the grace of God in Christ, the tenses of what God has done in Christ are critical in the, in the understanding of the gospel. He said to them that they should take note that another gospel tries to change the tenses subtly. Another gospel will not change the sentence. The sentence will sound the same. But the tenses is what another gospel tampers with. And if you don't know, you will think we're saying the same thing. You've got to know that what you look out for are the tenses. The gospel of Christ and another gospel may sound alike. But the tenses is the dividing line. Please pay attention to this. Now, remember, the tenses will be Christ plus circumcision. There is Christ. We preach Christ. They preach Christ plus circumcision. Christ plus confession of sins. Christ plus obedience to the law. Christ Plus, a little bit of motivation. And brother Paul says, when we came, we did not come with the excellency of the wisdom of men. He said, when I came among you, I desired to know nothing. Save Christ and him crucified. That your faith should not rest in motivation. That your faith should not rest in intellectualism, but in the power of God. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. Christ plus. The word another is the word heteros in the Greek. It implies a different, a strange, an altered gospel. A different gospel, a strange gospel, an altered gospel. Then the word another, another gospel, which is not another. The second another is the word alos. Alos, another of the same kind. That's why it's very tricky. It's very tricky. Let me give you a little illustration. You are blessed. You are blessed. God will bless you. You are blessed. God will bless you. Let me give you another one. God will visit you. What's wrong with that? It sounds nice. But how can somebody living in me visit me? Visitation 2022. Divine visitation. No sir. I don't need any visitation. I am the house of God. I am his residence. I carry him with me. Somebody shout glory. Sit down. Let me push it a bit. Let me push it a bit. Let me bring push it a bit. So Paul emphasized that the strange gospel was sounding like it. But you must know the real gospel enough to be able to know the strange from the real. 
Teaching good? Teaching good? Now observe verse 7. Verse 7. Galatians 1 7. Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. The word trouble is from the Greek word taraso, taraso, which implies to steer or to agitate. There are some that agitate you. They steer you. You know, uh, there are some which, which ensures that you, are, you, you lack stability. Yeah, they take away from you that assurance. They cast a doubt or they throw on you a little bit of confusion. Yeah, I know I am righteous, but, 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 you know, you know, you know, you know, you, 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 they, 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 they take away from you that confidence where you prayed with confidence and received with confidence. But now you are not too sure because two, three things have been pointed to your attention. So they have tampered with your persuasion and they have thrown on you trouble. They are bringing a perversion to your thought pattern, a perversion to your wealth of information and a distortion to what you believed. And you know, that's why it's dangerous to save you from Bible study. It's very dangerous because then you become a prey. In the book of Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews says you can sleep. He said we take heed lest we sleep. It's not the word that sleeps, it's we that sleep. You know, you can be so much in the grace message and you think you've got enough of it. Just give you three months out of church. You start speaking nonsense. You can ha never have enough. You've got to hear this thing day and night. You've got to hear this thing all day long, all night long. And you know what? What you thought you knew before, if you pay more attention to listening, after a while you discover you didn't know. Now you know. Then when you think you know, if you pay some more attention, then you discover you really didn't know. Now you know. And so you keep getting to know. As you follow to get to know more. Somebody shout hallelujah. So that word taraso, it's used 17 times in the New Testament Greek. An information that causes a steering or an agitation. The word pervert. It says some will trouble you who will pervert. The word pervert is the Greek word metastrepho. Metastrepho. It's spelled as M-E-T-A-T-A-S-T-R-E-P-H-O, metastrapho. It implies to transmute or to corrupt. To transmute or to corrupt. That is to feed you a diseased diet. You are eating. Everybody thinks you are eating. But what you are eating is infected. Infected food. To pervert, poison, well packaged, well served. But later on, the effect of what was in the content begins to play out. To pervert, to pervert the gospel, to corrupt the gospel. Then that word trouble means to unsettle. To make you to lose confidence, to create anxiety. Anxiety. Where you think God didn't answer your prayer till you fast 100 days. And since you can't fast 100 days, you don't think you will get that breakthrough that you're looking for. So something has happened to your assurance. Where you think God didn't answer your prayer till you kept to the midnight clock. They call it the midnight prayer. And you know that is a local African spirit. The midnight the midnight prayer spirit came from Africa because Africans who have not traveled abroad think midnight is midnight everywhere. So they say there are demons that only operate at midnight. But midnight in Africa is morning in another place. have to observe a time. I don't have to observe a season. I don't have to observe a clock. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have access into this grace. We have undeniable access. I can talk to my father anytime. I talk to him while driving. I talk to him while eating. I talk to him while walking. I talk to him while writing. 
somebody shout glory undeniable access I don't need a man of God to touch me before God answers my prayer the God of the man of God is living on my ears I don't need to be anointed before God answers the anointing resides on my inside the anointing you have received of him abides in you. It doesn't visit you. It dwells in you. There are no deeper anointings and shallow anointings. There is no big anointing and small anointing. Holy Ghost is a Holy Ghost. The same Holy Ghost on the man is the same Holy Ghost on the woman. It's the same Holy Ghost on the child. Somebody's not hearing me. If you're hearing me, shout, I hear, I hear. There be some that will transmute the message. They will make you lose confidence. They will tell you there are realms, there are portals, there are depths. Nowhere is deeper than in. Nowhere is closer than in. Nowhere is higher than in. You know, theologians look for the right word to describe the inseparable union between the believer and Christ. And they couldn't find any English word that was good enough to transcribe what Paul said, other than in. How closer can you be to anybody than in? Draw me close to you. Get born again, my friend. Get born again, my friend. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit Oh, glory to God. I'm born of spirit. I live in the spirit. I walk in the spirit. I operate in the spirit. Ay, 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 ay. In the book of Ephesians chapter 6, he said, praying with all prayer and supplication where? In the spirit. So all prayer where? In the spirit. When I pray for the sick, if you need a miracle, shall know me, Antana. Whatever you need, you pray in the spirit. You don't have to calculate which scripture to quote. You don't have to think of which vocabulary to formulate. It's so easy to pray in the spirit. Ah, Ah, Somebody shout, Holy Ghost. When I want to be in the spirit, what do I do to be in the spirit? I'm in the spirit. You live in the spirit. You walk in the spirit. You function in the spirit. Glory to God. Somebody shout glory. Sit down, let me push this. Let me push this. One of the greatest damage that another gospel does is to rob you of your assurance of salvation. You hear Christians say, my goal is to make heaven. That's a stupid goal, my friend. If that's your goal, you don't have a goal. I don't want to be in any heaven where Jesus is not. Jesus makes heaven heaven. If Jesus is not there, I don't want to go there. And for your information, it's not heaven at last. It's heaven at first. We begin in heaven. We continue in heaven. We end in heaven. Because the heavenly is in Christ. That's where you are. I say that's where you are. And you know this heaven at last, they use it as a control valve. Whenever you're beginning to enjoy your liberty in Christ, the man of God will wear his prayer shawl. My prayer is that you make it at last. Just to control your liberty. Brother Paul said they came to spy on our liberty. And we didn't give them not even an hour. We denied them opportunity to mess around with our liberty. What we have in Christ was purchased by his life. Therefore we are not economical about enjoying what Christ has done. Somebody who's with me shout a powerful amen. Now observe it is not Christ that, that is troubled. 
It is what Christ has done that becomes troubled in the believer. When another gospel is preached. When another gospel is preached, it leaves you thinking you should get more. More of you. More of you. <laughs> Is there a leakage somewhere? Why are you asking for more? All of you. All of you. Jesus, all of you. But another gospel makes you think that there is still more you need to get. It keeps you longing for what can never be made possible. Yeah. A man of God said he was praying and he said, Oh God, I need more anointing. I need more power. I need more fire. He said, when he kept quiet, God said to him, Where do you want me to get it from? Where do you want to get it from? I gave you my name. I gave you my word. I gave you my spirit. I gave you my son. Now I live inside you. Where do you want me to get it from? You've got all things that pertain to life and godliness. You're complete in him who is the head of our principalities. I feel like preaching here. man. God punish the devil. God all of him. He gave you himself. Glory to God. Let's push it a little more. Let's push it a little more. So, another gospel or the perversion or the trouble changes the narratives. It changes the narratives. It tampers with the tenses of the gospel. The gospel has tenses. And if you don't know the tenses... You could be looking for what God has done in a future that don't exist. So what you have been handed down, it's false hope. You are hoping for what will never come. A mirage. It's like Christians who spend their time every day praying for things. God, give me this. Give me this. Give me this. Oh, Father, do it now. Give me this. Every day. After these things do the Gentiles seek. Only Gentiles seek for things. And if you're a Gentile, keep praying those prayers. Your heavenly father knows that you have need of these things and he has scattered for them. But you seek first. The word first is not first, second, third. It's Bible language. You seek first means you seek only. You seek only the kingdom and his righteousness. That's what you seek. You don't need more. You have all. If there's anything you need, it's the knowledge of all you have. And that's why you come to church. To learn all that you already have. That the communication of your faith may become effectual by the act of every that is in you. Because you are where? In. Now, Pastor Flourish. Pastor Flourish, you don't want me to come here again. Because you, you've done all the job, man. Can we celebrate Pastor Flourish? So what are the narratives of the gospel? Please sit down, let's hit it. What are the narratives of the gospel? Somebody said to me, Dr. Damina, how, what about the book of Revelation? I said, what about it? He said, can you explain to me the book of Revelation? I said, what do you want from the book of Revelation? He said, I need some explanation. I said, like what? He said, you know the horns, 666, the dragons. I said, you are missing the point. Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. Everybody read for me the first sentence. Can we go? Stop. The revelation of who? So when you read Revelation, don't look for horns. Look for Christ. Don't look for tigers. Look for Christ. Don't look for horses. It's the revelation of Jesus. So why are there heavy use of metaphors? Because angels were attempting to reveal Christ when they themselves don't know him. 
Angels are servants. God does not reveal himself to servants. He reveals himself to sons. Servants will only know the revelation of God when they hang around sons. As sons are discussing, angels will eavesdrop. That's why when we come together, we are come to an innumerable company. What are the angels doing? They are taking notes. As we are teaching now, they are taking notes. They are saying, oh, oh really? Oh. Because we are the university of angels. Now observe. So it's the revelation of Jesus Christ. All right. Flip to verse 4. Everybody will read with me like a mass choir. Revelation chapter 1 verse 4. Can we all go together? 1 verse 4. 1, 2, go. Which are in Asia. Grace be unto you and peace from him which is, which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Now verse 5. Let's go verse 5 everybody. One, two, go. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth. Observe tenses now. Unto him that he will love us. He will love you. If you sing louder, he will love you. If your offering is heavy, he will love you. If you fast, he will love you. I'm not fasting to be loved. I'm loved so I fast to fellowship with my lover. I'm not praying to be loved. He has loved me. It is his love that is moving me to spend time in prayer. He has loved me already. It's too late. He can't change his mind. Dr. Phil said that tonight. Now that's, that's one of the narratives of the gospel. You are loved. It has a closure. You are loved. It's not you are, you will be, uh, you are loved. Just like you are saved. It has a closure. You are saved. You are loved. Now observe, loved us. Number two. He will not wash you. You're washed. Teaching good? Tenses. Tenses. Next verse. Next verse. Oh, glory to God. Everybody want to go and have. You will be made a king. Anointing for royalty. Anointing for royalty. He has made us. He will not. He has. Another gospel will tell you he will. The gospel of Christ will tell you he has. If you don't know as simple as just this simple stuff I'm showing you, you will be sucked into deception. Yeah. God will make you. Anointing for making. You've been made. You've been washed. You've been loved. I didn't hear a powerful amen. amen. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 5. Pay attention to the tenses. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 5. Can we all agree together? Everybody want to go? Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened, quickened us together with Christ by grace, you will be saved. You are saved. Washed. Loved. Forgiven. With a closure. Teaching good? Next verse. Oh, glory to God. Can we go together? I want to go. And have raised us up together. And. Where are you sitting? In Lekki, Lagos. In VI, Lagos. Where are you seated? So if things are not working for people in Lekki, your case is different. They are in Lekki, you are in Christ. So if they can't get things to work, you operate from your position in Christ. Ilato, Marika, Tonika, Kalana. Juane. Somebody shout, I hear, I hear. 
raised us up together, quickened us together, made us sit together. Together, together, together. It's a Greek word, sukatizo. That means you will never find one without the order. Where he is, I am. Where I am, he is. What he has, I have. What I have, he has. What he can do, I can. What cannot fight him, cannot fight as he is. If you are catching the flow, shout, I hear, I hear. Put up another scripture. Let me show you. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 11. Let's do it together like a mass choir, everybody. Want to go and search where some of you but washed. But you are but you are washed, sanctified, justified. It's not if you pray for four more hours, you'll be holy. Fraud! Before you learn to pray for four hours, once you believe in Jesus, you're sanctified. You're as holy as he is. You didn't hear that. You're as holy as Jesus is. Because the most holy can only live in the most holy. You are the Lord that is your name You will never show your glory with it Shut up Jesus said and the glory that you gave to me I have given it to them <laughs> Glory, glory, glory Somebody shout glory Somebody shout glory Hold your name on shot glory. We are the carriers of that glory. We walk with that glory. We function in that glory. His glory he has shared with me. The glory of his resurrection. The glory of his ascension. The glory of his glorification. For those he foreknew, he predestinated. Those he predestinated, he called. Those he called, he justified. Those he justified, he glory. Christ in you. Are you catching my flow tonight? I give you another scripture. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. Zizo, zo, 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 zo. Are we ready? Want to go, everybody? Who had saved us and tenses, tenses, tenses? God is not going to call you. Every one of you here, there's a call of God on your life. Every one of you, whether you feel it, it's not a feeling. All of you are called. Every child of God is called. All of us. The mandate is to all of us. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. For the perfecting of the saints. To do the work of ministry. Every child of God is called to the ministry. But you know the difference is. When God calls you. You answer the call by coming. You don't answer the call by starting. Bishop, you know that's where the problem is. A man of God will say, God called me. He called you means come. Not go. Many, once God called them, they start end time call international. No. The calling is so that you can be equipped. He called you so he can plant you in a local assembly to be equipped. In, in Mark chapter 3, he called them to be with him first that he may send them. So, the call is to be with. He's not called to start ministry. Yeah, wait first. It's step by step now. Be coming down, be coming down. When he calls, it's so you can come and get matching orders. Come and understand the mandate. Get the message. Be grounded. Be established. Then based on that, 
Go. Call is not go. It's in Nigeria when I say come, he say I'm coming. <laughs> he said, come now. He said, I am coming. But he's going. And they come. Mm -mm. When the Bible says he called them, he called them to be equipped. Being in logic church is you answering the call of God. Being in logic church is you responding to the will of God for your life. See, the will of God is not fulfilled in isolation. He has taken the solitary and planted them in families. Because that's where you have support system to equip you with all you need to fulfill the mandate of God for your life. You can't be in isolation. He that isolates himself rages against all judgment. He that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall dwell in the congregation of the dead. You can't afford it. It's not good for a man to be alone. It's not a marriage scripture. No, it's not for marriage. That scripture is not for marriage. It's not good for a man to be alone. It's a Christocentric scripture. For God so loved the world. He gave his only. His only. So Jesus died and gave up the only. Because it's not good for him to be alone. Upon resurrection, he became the prototokos. The prototype, the pattern song, and because of Jesus, He has brought many songs unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. For both He that sanctify and they that are sanctified are all of one. For which cause is not ashamed to call them brethren. Somebody shout glory in the house. So the tenses of the gospel is what Christ has done. Not what Christ will do. Once you start hearing he will do, run. If your TV is on and you hear he will, turn it off. If your radio is on and you hear he will, change it. At that time, it's better to listen to the video. At least you know the difference. You didn't hear what I said. At least you know the difference. But this one is sub to. So switch over. Just switch over and look for something else. You don't want to be found listening to what can slip into you and tamper with your mindset. You know, humans are products of influence. All of us are influenced. Even you that say nobody can influence me, that statement came from somebody's statement. You had it from somebody. So even that statement is influence. If you're, catching, if you're catching my flow, shout, I hear you. So brother Paul says you must mind this another gospel. This gospel is wicked. 2 Corinthians 11, 4 as I close this service. Tomorrow morning, Kiba da Gabada. Hey, let's read together, everybody. For if he that cometh preacheth, so there is another Jesus. Wait. When a man is praying and he says in Jesus' name, don't shout amen. Ask which one? There is another Jesus. Just like there is another gospel. The Jesus of another gospel validates that gospel. People go to native doctors and native doctors pray for them in Jesus' name. And so because they heard in Jesus' name and saw a very big copy of family Bible. They could no more tell the difference. They said, the man is a man of God. He even called Jesus on my head. And then, of course, one large size, Goya oil. He opened and... 
take a little. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. You're fooled because you're hearing Jesus. There is another Jesus. And Paul said, this another Jesus is whom we have not preached. Take note of the tenses. Preached. Past. Or if you receive another spirit. So, hold on. Everybody falling on the ground is not Holy Ghost. So when you see people falling, ask which one is in operation. <laughs> which, which, which one? <laughs> Are you following? Which one? And I will show you how to know which one in another two, three minutes. <laughs> which one is going on here? Then observe. Which you have not received. Or another gospel. Which you have not accepted. You might well bear with him. Now, if you are thinking in terms of English, that sentence is not English. In the Greek, you might well bear with him means resist him. Push him off. So, how do I know another gospel? Tenses. Okay. If his spirit I meet in operation, how do I know that this spirit is another? The time shall come. When they shall not endure sound doctrine. So they would heap up teachers with itching ears. With seducing spirits. So the teaching reveals the spirit. What are they preaching? If it is a future Jesus. is another Jesus. How do I know the spirit in operation? What did the man say? What he said will determine who fell or who didn't fall. It's easy to get people to fall. Trust me. I can get a whole church on the floor where they are not taught. All you need to do is massage their emotions. 16 girls here. Yeah? You've been believing for a husband. None has come. Get ready. 25 businessmen here. And keyboard. Just touch that thing. Ah. The spirit is going to move now. You cannot stand. You cannot stand. You cannot stand. You cannot stand. All over the place. What are they? What are they hitting the floor for? Something was said. Something was said. That's why being in logic church is a blessing. You have no idea. We are nothing is said to get you to do anything. All that is being said is to reveal you to you. So you can rise to your fullness in Christ Jesus. And enjoy what Christ has done for you. Glory to God. Are you blessed tonight? Get on your feet. That's all I've got for you. If I stay with you, I won't let you go home. Turn to your neighbor and say another spirit. Another Jesus. Another gospel. Very important. Another spirit. Another Jesus. How do I know this is another spirit? What is taught? How do I know this is another Jesus? What are they teaching? How do I know this is another gospel? What are the tenses? Good teaching? I believe God. In the days to come. In the weeks to come. Right in logic church. Great men and women of God. Are being equipped. That will take this gospel. Not just to this locality. But to the nations of the earth. Some of you are hearing me right now. There's a making going on in your spirit. A preparation going on. To fulfill God's will and purpose. God's calling. God's mandate for your life. These are moments you don't play with. These are moments you don't joke with. Because something eternal is taking place in your life. There's an equipping going on. And I speak over you prophetically. By the spirit of God and by the power of God. Wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice. You will not be distracted. You stay focused. You're strengthened with might by the spirit in the inner man. 
I decree that ministry flourishes through you. The gifting of God on your inside will steer it up. We steer it up. We steer it up. Do exploits in the name of Jesus. Praise you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says that amen on a note of final letter. Give Jesus some crazy Holy Ghost noise in this house. Glory! When you see Jesus, money loses value. And all we do in every service is unveil him. When you see him, nothing matters anymore. Zacchaeus, the tax collector, Jesus came to his house. When he saw Jesus, nobody preached to him. It dawned on him that this is Jesus, the desire of all nations. He said, everybody have cheated times for and paying back. There's something about seeing Jesus and material things losing value. They lose value. They saw Jesus on the donkey riding into Jerusalem and they started bringing out gold and jewelry and they were throwing them on the ground. When you see Jesus, money loses value. When you hear a word like you've been hearing this whole evening, you want to honor him. You want to give to him. You want to make your monies available so that this gospel, there are people in Lekki here that are languishing on that tax masters. They need to hear this message. They need to hear it. And if God has blessed you, you've got money, don't just give like others. Make a mark. Make an impact in this conference. The banking details are on the screen. You want to give tonight generously. And if you don't have, relax. No pressure. We're excited. And we're glad you're here. Just keep learning. After a while, you will have more than enough for the work of God. Can I have a good amen? Let's pray for your offerings tonight. Father, thank you for the privilege to give. We give in faith and we give to honor you. Thank you for all you've done for us. And tonight we come with joy in our hearts and we offer our offerings, our commitments to your kingdom to see to the advancement of the gospel. And I decree and declare tonight every need met, every desire granted. And in the name of Jesus, you have wisdom, ideas, concepts and insights to go make more money for the kingdom. In Jesus' name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Glory to God. I hand over to Pastor Flo. Come on. Oh, we're not out of message. We're just out of time. And I'm very sure you were blessed by that word. Please follow us on all our social media platform and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're watching and you have not accepted Jesus into your heart, I want to lead you to Christ. By a simple prayer, say with my heart I believe and with my mouth I confess that Jesus is Lord. I accept you into my heart today. Flood my life with your light, with your life and your peace in Jesus' name. Satan, I am out of your claws. I am in Christ and Christ is in me. I decree and declare I am saved. I confess with my mouth Jesus is Lord. I believe in my heart that he died for me. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, in Jesus' matchless name. Amen. Now that you are saved, please find any of our churches around the world to log in and keep fellowship and keep hearing the word of his grace we encourage you to respond by way of giving the, the account the details are on the screen please give and just respond to the word of his grace until i come your way again it's your boy pastor flourish from the logic nation never forget god loves you more than the devil hates you have a flourishing week ahead of you in jesus name with great grace blessings